So today I wanted to talk about the Raspberry Pi 4. And as you can see on the screen here, these come in all kinds of starter kits that everything you need to get up and running. And that's what we have here. So here we just have the box. If we open it up, we can see the Raspberry Pi is in there. And this is just the box the Raspberry Pi comes in. And this is the four gigabyte model. Now if we open it up, we have some other stuff in here. So this is the HDMI cable. So here we have a power adapter. This one actually has a switch on it to turn it off and on. But if I look on the back here, it's just like a three and a half amp power adapter. So nothing extremely special, but it should be enough. Next up, we have just like a little case. You can put the Raspberry Pi in it, so you just don't have exposed PCB. And we have some other stuff here. So this is just the SD card reader. It's got USB on one side, USB-C on another side. And this is just to put your installation on the uh, micro SD card. It's kind of a cool little reader. I haven't seen one like this before where it's double-sided. Next up, we just have a very small, very loud fan that we can just hook up directly to the Raspberry Pi's headers and power it off of. And here is the micro SD card. This one is here is a 32 gigabyte. It should, just, it should be more than enough for anything we can ever do with it. And we have some heat sinks. These are just kind of metal milled heat sinks, nothing special. And a screwdriver to put it all together. So here's the actual Raspberry Pi. We just opened it from this little pink box. And it comes with this card. And it says on the card, like, you know, put it on the card and then put it on the desk. I guess they don't want you to put the bare PCB on the desk. They want you to put it on this card. So here we go, there's the CPU. So it's like a 1.5 gigahertz quad core. It's pretty cool. There's your RAM IC. So like I said, this is the four gigabyte module. You got two USB 2.0, two 3.0. And on this new Raspberry Pi, they actually changed the HDMI. So now we have like mini HDMI or micro HDMI. It's the annoying one that always breaks. So that's cool. I mean, there's two of them. So I guess it's better than before. Just the connector is always has issues whenever I have something like this. And of course the power is type C, USB type C for your power. And that's pretty much that. We put our SD card on the bottom. Here's your micro SD card reader. So you got USB on one side, USB type C on the other. We just put it on this side like this. It's a cool little reader. I haven't seen one like this before. And then we're just gonna plug it in the computer. Okay, so for this next step, we basically want to put a operating system on the SD card. So that way the Raspberry Pi has something to boot from. Now there's like tons of actual OS's that'll work with the Raspberry Pi, a Fedora, Kali Linux, uh, I think there's even a Windows uh, IoT that'll work. But I'm just gonna use this one, it's Raspberryan. It's the one that the people that make Raspberry Pi produce. So. We're just gonna download this, and it's gonna be in a zip file. Here's the zip file here, and basically it's just an IMG file. So I'm gonna use Rufus, select the SD card, select the image, make sure it defaults to FAT32, it should, and then just hit start. All right, so we've plugged everything in, we've booted up, we've set our default password. So the first thing we really need to do is update this Raspberry Pi. So in order to do that, you just open up a terminal window, type sudo apt-get update. And assuming you have internet connection, it'll just go ahead and update everything. Then we just do sudo do apt-get upgrade. So on this Raspberry Pi, I'm actually running with the fan not connected just because it was really loud. And actually just updating everything, the Raspberry Pi got up to like 78C. So it's more or less idle. It's copying some files. That's about it. So you really do need a fan on these. But the majority of fans that I've seen for these are just straight up voltage fans. There's no PWM. And these small fans are really loud and annoying. 
So I'm going to go ahead and show you how loud these things are. There are some aftermarket uh, heat sinks and I did manage to find a tower cooler, which is kind of cool. There seems to only be like one company making these. And it's basically just like a little CPU tower cooler. Uh, but that's pretty much just the Raspberry Pi 4, how to set it up, what it is. A lot of people use these things for network devices. With the, the changes with the Raspberry Pi 4, you can actually use these as like desktop replacements for most users. So like if you just browse the web, you know, check your email, stuff like that. These new Raspberry Pi 4s are perfectly capable of doing all of that. And there's just endless ways to use these things. And they're just generally pretty cool. Thank you for watching the video and until next time.